Oh, good evening. Uh, I am Chairman Sharp, uh, Blackfeet Nation. I have a, a press release, uh, I guess, in response to the press release that was uh, executed and released today by um, Mr. Running Crane, who was a contact person listed on the top of the page. I want to uh, express and just read uh, some things to, uh, I guess, their title was to set the record straight. I have the same uh, motive and uh, thought process here. Recently, uh, many attempts have been initiated to uh, Chairman Sharp's office, my office, to reconnect with those council members who fled the meeting in October of this year. The Casino Council operates presently with no power or ability to initiate or conduct official business beneficial to members of the Blackfeet Nation. Their only official business that is to take care of their own interests and well-being, and I say not the members of this tribe. The individuals of Old Person, Running Crane, and other terminated members, Ogier and Gardapi, have done nothing for the good of the people but hide out at the casino day after day and I might add, surrounding themselves with a hired arm, uh, hired uh, security force, uh, or termed uh, hired guns. The information that they are conveying to the public says nothing about the BIA <clears throat> last year. The same individuals, Mr. Running Crane, Mr. Auger, uh, Mr. O'Person, and Mr. Gardapi, indicated that the BIA had no BIA business in our Blackfeet governmental affairs. And now it seems that the shoe is on the other foot. They are screaming day after day for the BIA to come and intervene and to mediate. That wasn't the case many months ago. I say this to the BIA who was once told to butt out by individuals that I mentioned. I say to them again on behalf of the Blackfeet Nation, stay out of the Blackfeet Nation's business. Several weeks ago, speaking to Mike Black, a BIA line officer, and with Mr. Parisian's words of last year in December still fresh in my mind, quote Mr. Black's words, your tribe's business and affairs is yours alone. You have to solve it. I understand your plight and difficulty. Mr. Parisian's words from last December I don't care how you get it done for a quorum, I, just don't, I don't need to know the exacts or details. I say with the abandonment of Old Person and Running Crane and terminated Auger and Gardapi individuals who fled their offices many weeks ago, they do not care to fulfill their duties or obligations by their, their, by their behavior. In keeping the Blackfeet tribe going, it has been those that have been here every day that I might add at the headquarters, that'd be old person, I mean, uh, old chief, little dog, McEvers, myself, Cap Bosserbs, and most recently uh, Vial and uh, Goss, that have taken the task of doing and dealing with everyday uh, uh, business that the people have. This is uh, the action, I guess, in. Uh, reaction in regards to old person running crane and the others who have neglected to do this. Thus in solving the internal business of the tribe we've had no choice but to solve the matter as directed by the regional BIA and with the words from the line officer and the BIA in DC. In essence we've dealt with the issue of the abandoned positions with those casino council members and install new members who can handle and deal with the people of this nation day to day and not hide out. I might add they are accessible every day. Mr. Running Crane, who did not author the letter, which I believe plays with words that suggest that I am creating my own fantasy council and government. I say no. I am stopping Mr. Running Crane, Mr. Old Person, and the former council members, Ogier and Gardapi from running and, and continuing their own fantasy government and network. Again, I say to the BIA, stay out of our business and affairs. Your job is only to oversee the landowner's business and affairs. I remind Mr. Parisian of his past letters in the fall of 2012 of the quorum issue and the less than six BTBC members. 
The so-called dispute of this fantasy world that Roger Running Crane and Shannon Roger created <clears throat> implies that there was wrongdoing. Not so. We have Shannon Auger's text messages and verbal commitments that he made to myself and to other members of the Head Start staff on that day that he alludes to as being illegal in the bonus question. The meeting was not a voting meeting as Roger and Running Crane claim. There was no minutes. There was no record of any votes. And in fact, as I mentioned before, Mr. Running Crane is the one that suggested on how the party was to be paid with overtime. So it was agreed. The group only was seeking what it was owed to them for the work they performed and in fact was awarded a large amount of money from the grant that they submitted. One of the areas that this group implemented the grant money and was designated for was the Heart Butte Community Head Start uh, area for the children. The $33,000 uh, grant, as part of it, as I mentioned, was going to Heartbeat. But I might add, Mr. Running Craig did not think of this, or in fact, didn't think about anything that the community is entitled to. So what gives him the right to question something that was going to be beneficial for the community that he had no part of? And I might add that a large portion of the community did not vote for him in 2012. In all actuality, the Head Start group has been allowed to write for grants and such prior to the dates of Mr. Running Crane's appointment to the council. Thus in the years that he was out or voted out in two, 2010, many things were done and relaxed and allowed for. Upon his re-entry into the council, his understanding of recent developments, he had no understanding or clue, but he portrayed it. Mr. O'Shea and Mr. Rennie Crane make it seem as if our family members were the only ones to receive a rightful compensation. Not so, there were others that were entitled to this. And again, I say Mr. Rennie Crane and Mr. O'Shea, who plays with words and plays with things and people and manipulates as he's famous for did text me that he was committed to voting for it. He did commit to members of the Head Start staff in the lobby that he was going to vote for it. So now he comes out with a different story. I say that in the case of Mr. Ager, he has looked out for his family members, his father, the Poka, his restaurant, his brothers and relatives all were under his wing. Mr. Auger used the system to place them into jobs or in line for receivership of the tribe's money, for example, the restaurant which is owned by Mr. Auger. There are many other cases of systematic abuse and manipulation by a person who rose to the infamy with his antics in the federal and tribal recent DUI cases he was involved in. His actions caused not only harm and embarrassment for the Blackfeet people and the citizens, but for all the Montana citizens. I say that in the realm of senses lost, as they allude to in the letter, Mr. Auger has lost a great deal with his ability to flee. I say fleeing. Back in the early part of the year, he fled the state of Montana's governmental business and fled back to the reservation, holding up the state of Montana's uh, important aspects of their business. And also fleeing the law enforcement of Glacier County and fleeing the duties in the most recent duties and obligations of the council member of the tribe in October. I said that we were always at the table to deal with the issues as a nine-body council, not old person Auger and Running Crane's fantasy council. I've been waiting with Mr. McEvers, Mr. Old Chief, Ms. Little Dog, Ms. Kath Boss Ribs, and recently Leon Vial and Shane Goss for Earl and Roger to return we want to work for the people and for the holiday season, which we are aware of, for the people. I encourage Earl, Earl and Roger to come down to the headquarters. We await your presence. I say to the BIA, your letters of last year from Mr. Parisian are still on my desk with your words that dictate how events are unfolding now. I say to the BIA, please let us manage our own affairs. You've caused enough confusion 
to this, uh, what we're involved with the British, uh, the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council. With that, I'd like to conclude and say, if you want anything, answers or anything, please come to the tribal office headquarters. We are there every day to answer your questions. Do not submit to the Facebook or to the smear campaign letters that are being floated around. You know, this, this does no, no one any good. We are there, you are free to come. We'll try to our best to answer your questions or deal with your issues at hand. And again, for the Casino Council, please don't be afraid of us. Thank you.